Hi, my name is Trace. I'm setting up my recording equipment for some YouTube videos and some recording projects. While doing so, I thought I would bring you along with me while I set up Cubase 6 to record with an interface and two microphones. Dealing with tracks, buses, and ports can be challenging with any multi-track recording software. Maybe this will help you with yours. In this video, I'm going to show you my equipment setup. Then I'm going to give a quick explanation of what needs to be done to record with any multi-track recording software. Then we'll go through those steps with Cubase 6. Let's get started. I'll be using an M-Audio FastTrack Pro interface plugged into my desktop. The microphones are the AKG Perception 120 and 220. The P120 is plugged into microphone channel 1 and the P220 is plugged into microphone channel 2 on the front of the interface. Cubase will refer to these as the input ports. The left and right speakers are plugged into the output channels 1 and 2 on the back of the interface. Cubase will refer to these as the output ports. We'll launch our multi-track recording software. Then we'll select a driver for the interface we are using for recording and playback. The driver tells the software how many ports are available for recording and playback. Then we'll connect the software to the interface with input and output buses. We'll create two audio tracks to record two microphones and play through the speaker ports on the interface. Then we'll connect the tracks to the input and output buses in the software. The last thing we'll do is save these settings as a template so we can use them again later. First, we launch Cubase. I'm using Cubase Artist 6. This procedure should be the same on all versions of Cubase 6. Cubase 6 launches with the Project Assistant. Let's begin by creating an empty project. We select empty in the project assistant. Then we will create and name a project folder. The next step is to tell Cubase what interface we are using. To do this, we go to devices, Device Setup, VST Audio System, and the ASIO Driver menu, we select the driver to the interface we are using. If we select the driver in the Devices window, it will display all of the input and output ports on the interface. Now it's time to connect the interface to Cubase. Let's go to Devices again, then VST Connections. This is where we create and assign input and output buses in Cubase and connect them to the input and output ports on the interface. Let's start with the inputs. Cubase defaults to a stereo input bus. Let's remove that stereo bus and add two mono buses. As you can see, Cubase automatically connected the mono-in bus 
to device port 1 and the mono in 2 bus to device port 2. Let's go to the outputs. As you can see, the stereo bus corresponds with the left and right speaker ports on the interface. You do have the option of connecting any active port to any bus. The final process is creating tracks in Cubase to record to and play back from. Tracks can be created by going to the project menu and adding audio tracks. They can also be created by right clicking in this area of the project window. Let's add two mono tracks. Let's make the tracks taller so they're easier to see. Now is a good time to name the tracks. Let's name track 1 P120 and track 2 P220. Let's change the track colors to make them easier to identify. We do this by holding down control and left clicking on the track color. Now let's connect the tracks to the input and output buses. Let's start with the P120 track. Left click on Edit Channel Settings. We want the P120 track recording from the mono in or port 1 of the interface and playing back in stereo. If you look at the top right corner of the VST audio channel settings for the P120, you will see that Cubase has defaulted to mono in and stereo out for channel one, which is correct. All we have to do now is turn on the monitor and see if we have a signal from the P120. Yes, we do. Now let's check the number two microphone or the P220 track. If you check the top right hand corner of the VST audio channel settings for the P220, which is in input number two of the interface, you will see that Cubase has defaulted track two to the exact same settings as track one. This is incorrect. In this case, we would have both microphones recording to the same track. We want the P120 recording to track 1 and the P220 recording to track 2. To correct this, all we have to do is connect port 2 to the mono N2 bus and turn on the monitor for the P220 track and check for a signal. It's good. All we have to do now is save this as a template so we can start new projects with these settings. To do this, we go to File, Save as Template, We'll name this one P120 and 220. The next time we launch Cubase, this template will be an option in the Project Assistant.
That's how you set up Cubase 6 to record two microphones through an interface. The concept is the same for all multi-track recording software. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.